Hello and welcome. Today I want to have a look at a scene from Steptoe and Son and take a closer examination of how it was filmed. So sitcoms in general are pretty straight down the line when it comes to direction and blocking, basically just point the camera at the actors and cut between them as they converse. What we're going to look at here is a demonstration of how much you can do with a standard three camera setup to really help tell the story cinematically. So the episode we're looking at here is called Cross Swords. It's episode two of series four. It's when the show was at the absolute height of its popularity. This was in 1965 and the show was filmed as live in front of a studio audience. So any movement of the actors, camera movement, had to happen in real time and was carefully rehearsed beforehand. No second takes, no pauses between shots. I'll get on to the practicalities of how that was achieved later, but first let's have a look at how the director Duncan Wood chose to film this scene in a way that adds to the narrative over and above simply showing the action. So, this is a scene where Harold and Albert are visiting an antique dealer to try and sell a figurine that they've picked up on the round. Let's jump in at the point of the scene where the antique dealer gives them a very lucrative offer for their piece. On that basis, I'm prepared to offer you, oh, 200 pounds. 200 pounds? For that? Straight away, we jump to close-ups to get the reactions of both Albert and then Harold. This specifically focuses in on their response in order to increase the intensity of that sense of shock that they're having. We cut him back to Derek Nimmo and he's just in a standard mid-shot because this particular moment is not as intense for him. We then have significant character movement. Harold and Albert retreat to the other side of the room to confer. We already have a camera ready to catch them as they move to their new mark. And this shot really creates a sense of depth in the scene which in itself is quite unusual for things set on these relatively small stages. They settle into quite a tight shot to encompass them both, which continues to heighten that intensity of the moment. But we've still got Derek Nimmo pottering around in the background. We've got the focus on the characters without losing the sense of the bigger picture. Then we go even further, switching to this very tight two shot as Harold wistfully imagines his impending riches and Albert implores him not to be greedy. There's a palpable energy to this scene that comes from Albert pulling on Harold's arm, having the actors so closely positioned together and keeping that dialogue running continuously. There's no time to pause, no time to think straight, and getting in so close to the action helps to drive this urgency with an almost claustrophobic feel that should put us, the audience, into that excited and slightly panicked mindset of Harold. Then finally we break away and Harold runs back to the starting point where we get back to a more standard three-point camera system with this central master wide. It's a fantastic demonstration of how the method of filming can affect and enhance what we experience on an emotional level, perhaps mostly in a subconscious way, to add to the more obvious appeals of the script and performance. And if you're interested in the technical side, I will now try and give some idea of exactly how this is done. So, standard setup at the time, and still today for traditional stage set shows, is what they call a three-camera setup. This basically means that there are three cameras pointed at the action. One on the left, one in the centre, one on the right. So early in the scene that we're looking at, we get a very clear example of how this works. Here we have Harold and Albert Steptoe in an antique shop. So we establish the master wide on the central camera, it's camera two, and then we swap between camera one on the left side, covering the scene across the right, in this case focusing on Albert, and camera three on the right, covering the reverse on Harold. That's it, that's the three camera setup in a nutshell. So let's jump back to that later part of the scene. Now we've introduced Derek Nimmo as the shop owner, a third character and a third point of focus that the cameras will have to cover. That's not too much of a problem though, until we get some character movement. Now bear in mind, these cameras are really quite big. They're mounted on wheels and have several ranges of motion, but they are bulky things with generally only one operator at a time. They also have several cables running from them, leading to the power source, as well as an output where the director and editing team will be watching. And because of all these cables, that means they can't cross each other. The order we had them in, one, two, three, across that scene, will have to remain that way. But they can move within the scene, as we will now see. So, here we are, back at the scene we saw earlier, and this time we'll figure out what the cameras were doing. We start here on camera two, mid-shot on the step toes, Cutting to camera one, which gives us this more dirty, over-the-shoulder feel that sets the characters more in the space in relation to the shop owner. During this time, camera two is repositioning to a close-up on Harold. Now we switch to camera three, a simple shot of Derek Nimmo, while camera one repositions to a close-up on Albert for the reactions. Basis, I'm prepared to offer you, oh, 200 pounds. 200 pounds? For that? Well, it's a fair prize. 200 pounds? Oh, well, I suppose I could stretch it a bit. Or, all right, then, 250. 250? 
And while we focus on Derek Numo again, camera one moves back to the over the shoulder to capture the bigger movement here. Meanwhile, camera three has shifted all the way to the edge of the set to capture the actor movement. This requires the actors to hit specific marks as the camera operator will be setting up the shot before they are in it. And you will notice here after they settle a very slight move in to frame them closer. Generally speaking, you don't want the camera moving while it's recording, but these types of small adjustments will happen. Uh, let's take the money. We only paid a fiver for a joke. Let's be easy. Let's take it. No, 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 no. I swear. We take it. We take it. While this scene continues, camera two can position for a close-up on the two of them. Great, that's what it is. Such a tight shot that the actors have very little freedom of movement before they start coming out of frame. Fortunately, the camera could make the shot after they had got into position, so all they have to do is stay in roughly the same place. Then we have one of the quickest moves of the whole scene as we momentarily switch back to camera three, so camera two can rapidly sweep across the stage to pick up as Harold runs back to the store owner. And just like that, we're back in that familiar setup with camera two as the main central master shot. Camera one comes to a two shot on the step toes and camera three can leisurely set up for a shot at the door to zoom in for the punchline at the end of the scene. So there it is. As you can see, the more intricate and specific you want to get with your shot choices, the slicker your entire team has to be. Camera operators, actors, the director and the editors, all working together to a strictly rehearsed routine. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found that interesting. This video was made in association with the British Sitcom History Podcast. It's, as you might guess, a podcast about British sitcoms. If you're interested in that sort of thing, give it a listen. Just search for it in any of the usual podcast places or find us at BritcomPod on your general social medias. Also check out the channel for further videos on similar topics.